Thanks to the folks who led the way. Thanks to the folks who let us thank them every day. Hi, welcome to the Fresh Tune Show. My name is Dave Paltz, and today is one of my inspirational live shows. I'm going to tell you the story of Sakala Sa. She was also known as Gutrud Simons Bonin, which combines her missionary given name and her later married name. She was of the Sioux Nation, and she was a writer and musician, educator, and political activist. She wrote several works chronicling her struggles with her cultural identity and the pull between the majority culture she was educated within and her Dakota Sioux culture into which she was born and raised. I'm going to start out today's show sharing the story of Zakala Sa that came from the New York Historical Society webpage. I'm going to start with one of my favorite quotes of hers. Look up and see a new day dawning. The story of Zakala Se. Zakala Se was born on February 22, 1876, on the Yankton Indian Reservation. She spent her early childhood on the reservation with her mother, who was of Sioux Dakota heritage. When Sakala was eight years old, missionaries from the White's Manual Labor Institute in Indiana came to the Yankton Reservation to recruit children for their boarding school. Sakala Say's older brother had recently returned from such a school, and her mother was hesitant to send her daughter away. Sakala Say, however, was eager to go. For children who had never been off the reservation, the school sounded like a magical place. The missionaries told stories about riding trains and picking red apples in large fields. After debating the decision, Sakala Sa's mother agreed to let her go. She did not want her daughter to leave and did not trust the white strangers, but she feared the Dakota way of life was ending. There were no schools on the reservation and she wanted her daughter to have an education. According to her autobiography, as soon as Sitala saw boarded the train, she regretted begging her mother to not let her go. She was about to spend years away from everything she knew. She did not know English, and tribal languages were banned at the school. She would be forced to give up her Dakota culture for a, quote, American one. Sakala Sa's arrival at the school was traumatic. The children learned that everyone would get a haircut. In Dakota culture, the only people to get haircuts were cowards who had been captured by the enemy. Sitkala Sa resisted by hiding in an empty room. When the staff of the school found her underneath a bed, they dragged her out, tied her to a chair, and cut off her braids as she cried out loud. Later in life, she wrote that the staff of the school did not care about her feelings and treated the children like, quote, little animals. After a few years, the school granted Sakala Sa permission to visit her mother during a school break. During the visit, her mother encouraged her to abandon school and stay at home. But she later wrote that visiting home made her sad. She returned to the school. Like many children, she may have felt that she no longer belonged on the reservation. Life at the school had changed her. In 1895, Sakala Sa graduated and joined a teacher training program at Earlham College in Indiana, where she was one of the few indigenous students. She then transferred to the New England Conservatory of Music, where she studied the violin. By 1900, she was teaching music and speech at the Carlisle Indian School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, one of the most famous boarding schools in the country. Sakala Sa worked at the Carlisle School for less than two years. The experience reminded her of her traumatic education. She watched a new generation of young children arrive on the trains and have their hair brutally cut. She began to question why the school required the children to give up their entire culture in exchange for an education. She saw the staff treat children cruelly and learned that the government paid the school for every child successfully removed from a reservation. She realized the schools were designed to erase her people's culture. Sakala Sa channeled her frustration into a love for writing. She wrote about her personal experiences and the customs and the values she had learned from her mother. 
Soon her essays and short stories were published in national magazines like Atlantic Monthly and Harper's Monthly. In 1901, she published a compilation of her work in a book called Old Indian Legends. That same year, Sakala Sa left the Carlisle School and returned to South Dakota. She took a job at the United States Bureau of Indian Affairs that supported her financially while she continued her true passion, writing stories that promoted Dakota culture and values. While working at the Bureau, Sakala Sa met fellow employee Raymond Talafis Bonin. They were married in 1902 and had one son, whom they named Raymond. The family moved to Utah, where Sakala Sa worked as a teacher. She did not teach at a boarding school, but at a school on the Ute Reservation where children lived at home. While teaching, she met William Hansen, a music professor at Brigham Young University. With William's help, Sakala Sa combined her love of music and writing. She wrote The Sundance, an opera based on her essays. It was the first published opera written by a person indigenous to North America. Because many indigenous customs were passed down orally through music, Sakala Sa believed it was a powerful way to share her family's value and reach a new audience. Sakala Sa would spend the rest of her life trying to preserve the custom of the indigenous people of North America. This story was shared on the New York Historical Society webpage, and it was under the heading, Women in the American Story. After hearing the story of Sakala Sa, I'd like to share another quote of hers that I'm going to share a song that I recorded that directly relates to it. The voice of the Great Spirit is heard in the twittering of the birds, the rippling of a mighty water, and the sweet breathing of flowers. The first song I'm going to play for you today is called This Land Needs Care from You and Me. It's based on a song I grew up singing way back in grammar school, and it was written by Woody Guthrie. And his song, This Land is Made for You and Me, I sang many, many times, and as an adult, I love singing the song, and I still like singing the song. But after a while, I said, you know, I don't really feel comfortable. There's, There are some people that sing this song like, yeah, this is our land, and in a kind of ownership way. And uh, I said, well, boy, we could really redirect some of that energy that says, yeah, this is our land, but emphasize that we're responsible to take care of that land. So I wrote some new words and, and entitled the song, This Land Needs Care from Me and You. And in the song, I did reference God, but in my mind, that reference to God is more like the great spirit that Sakala Sa would reference. This land needs care from me and you. This land is God's land. We're stewards of the land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest. We kept talking, we found a 
we certainly need to take care of this land. And if we don't, we're going to lose an awful lot. This next song is not a very happy song. It's called, It Was a Sad Day at Wounded Knee. I haven't written a lot of songs addressing the genocide that the Native Americans experienced ever since Columbus. I'll let it speak for itself. It was a sad day at Wounded Knee. It was a sad day. This is the Fresh Tune Show, and today's inspirational live show is dedicated to Sikala Sa. She's a Native American woman that was born in 1876, and I shared her story at the beginning of the show today. She was a writer, musician, educator, and political activist, and she was often referred to as the Redbird of Activism for all the work she had done to try to preserve her culture and Hand it on to the next generation. I'm going to play a fresh tune of mine now called The Water Falls. And it kind of has a little Native American vibe to it. It really directs us to take some guidance from nature, from the waterfalls, and from the streams that are around us, which I'm sure is at Kalasa, and hand it on to her students. So in her honor, I'm going to play this song called The Water Falls. Water falls from the rocks above From the mountains flow to the foam below She's played the mist We felt her kiss We raised our eyes and she saved our lives Her strength instills a loving will Gives guidance to the flow The Cascade's beauty took our breath Her roaring waves shook our nest We took a drink from her pool It sparked the flame to sing this tune Her strength instills our loving will Gives guidance to the flow Let us dive into her well and 
Babe would bless in wonderment At the gifts the falls had brought Brought us peace, brought us love Her strength instills our loving will Gives guidance to the flow Her strength instills our loving will Well, Sikalisa led quite a life, quite a lengthy one with some pretty unusual twists and turns. I'm going to play a song now called Oh, What a Path We're On. I was on the trail, the birds were singing. The bees were humming The sun was shining in my heart Was soaring Oh, what a path we're on The sky was blue My heart was true My thoughts were floating And my path was soothing And the big love filled my soul Oh, what a path we're on Water bugs floated by And the butterflies' wings took flight The wheels spin round And my song, it left the ground and I became one with greens and browns Oh, what a path we're on I have no place to be But to be just where I am To use these ears and eyes to see the stars and hear the love And be here one with the trail Oh, what a path we're on 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 oh, Well, Zikalisa experienced some of the darker parts of American history. But I think if we try not to make too many excuses for what went on and just try to figure out how to do things right here on out, we can make this world a better place. This song is called No Excuses. No excuses for trampling the Native Americans No excuses for enslaving the folks from Africa America, find your way Only then can you help the world become a better place No excuses for depriving folks of their liberties No excuses for turning a blind eye to what we know we see America, find your way And only then can you help the world become a better place We're looking Looking every 
every day We're counting on the young folks that come this way To learn from our mistakes Paint America with a kinder face No excuses for politicians who lie right through their teeth no excuses for them to wave the flag to fool you and me. America, find your way. And only then can you help the world become a better place. No excuses for not giving equal rights. No excuses for beating up folks for who they are. America, find your way. And only then can you help the world become a better place. We're looking, looking every day. We're counting on the young folks that come this way to learn from our mistakes. Paint America with a kinder face. To paint America with a kinder Well, I'm going to wrap up today's show that was dedicated to Kisala Sa. Her story is quite an inspirational one. Hopefully you check her out online. I'm going to wrap up the show with this song called Sunday School. Mama is a true The end justifies the means The good of the tribe Excuses the evils that they do Mama, is it true? Tell me without flinching Was the love once taught to me Just meant for Sunday school? A Sunday school A Sunday school Love was just for Sunday school Daddy, is it true? Folks once fought for equal justice Didn't march through town Chanting words of hate Daddy, was it true? Please tell me the answer Can we try to live with love? Or was that just for Sunday school? A Sunday school Sunday school Love was just for Sunday school Sister, is it true That you suffered for so long Under the yoke of misogyny Sister, is it true That we've got so much yet to do To live the words 
we heard in Sunday school. Sunday school, Sunday school, love was just for Sunday school. Brother, have you heard? Heard all of the questions. Can we find a way? to find some better ways can we work together and live with compassion or was all this talk of love just meant for Sunday school a Sunday school Sunday school love was just for Sunday school Sunday school, Sunday school, love was just for Sunday school. And that's it for the Fresh Tune Show today. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the show. Bye now. Thanks to the folks who led the way. Thanks to the folks, let us thank them every day.